This <laughs> if our cookie taster would get down here, then. <laughs> she wants to look beautiful for you all because she saw what I look like and she was like, yeah, come I better dress up. <laughs> back this week with something a little bit different. Recently, a couple of weeks ago, we did a store-bought chocolate chip cookie taste test, or Matan and Naomi did, <laughs> and we got inspired to make our own chocolate chip cookie because we did not have the best options, we felt. We really didn't <laughs> like a lot of them. So we went on the search for someone who makes great cookies, great baked goods, and someone we trust and we watched Claire Saffitt's newly released chocolate chip cookie video. Um, I have been watching Claire for a long time now and I really respect her. I think she's a really great baker. She knows exactly what she's talking about. So we wanted to come on and attempt to make her chocolate chip cookies, but gluten-free. We got kind of lucky because she just very recently, I think it's been like a week, I don't know. Yeah, it's super recent. Super recently posted uh, her exact chocolate chip cookie recipe. And if you guys don't know, she used to be a part of the Bon Appetit team. So that's how we got to know her yeah. and how most of you probably know her as well. Yeah, so we are going to attempt three different variations on her recipe only because gluten-free flour acts differently when baking. So we are trying to get the closest resemblance of what she describes her cookie to be. Chewy on the inside, nice and crispy on the outside with like rich chocolate kind of throughout um, and really well distributed. So we really wanna get as close to that as possible, but give all of the gluten-free people something to get excited about as well. I have been waiting to find a really good chocolate chip cookie recipe ever since I've been gluten-free. I have not found anything that's really impressed me. Um, it's hard to get that chew while you also get the crispy. So that's what we're in for today and we'll see how I do. Let's give it a shot. What's the first one that you want to, or the first variation on Claire's recipe you're gonna do? First, we are going to make her recipe to the book, just subbing out one for one gluten-free Bob's Red Mill flour. Cool, awesome. let's start. So I just like to preface this, that I am not a baker. I'm not a pastry chef. I don't have a lot of training in this. I haven't done a lot of baking since I've been gluten free um, because quite frankly, it's a little intimidating. Um, but I freaking love baked goods and I would love to do more of this. And so I'm really challenging myself today with these variations that I am trying to trying to kind of come up with to make these cookies. And I'm excited to see if they're successful. This first one, I'm just gonna brown the butter like she does. Um, something really special about Claire's cookies is that she uses brown butter to as the fat in her cookies, which adds a really toasty kind of, she describes it as, a butterscotchy flavor. So I'm gonna go ahead, brown this butter, and then cool it down, and just go along the steps of everything she does in her cookie video. Um, we are linking the video down below if you'd like to watch her make the cookies and describe everything she's doing and why she's doing it. Um, I've watched it about four times this morning. So <laughs> as we move along through this recipe, I will Go ahead and check in with you at another step. So I have the brown butter in this bowl and this is a bowl of ice it's resting in and I'm just stirring it up and having it kind of solidify back into butter. I've never done this before. It's, this is the first time I've seen this kind of step in a recipe, but you know, I'm just trusting her process and just going through whatever she tells us to do. So this is really interesting. She talks about how the butter, when you brown it, the water in it evaporates and then to help it 
emulsify with the cookie dough, you want that water to be back in it. So she does that by virtue of heavy cream. So I was using a rubber spatula, but a whisk, which she uses, <laughs> is definitely the better option. this butter brown sugar mixture. It's like really freaking tasty. Uh, Camille measured out all the dry ingredients. I'm just gonna add that. We're making three half recipes of this to try to keep it accurate with measurement, but not have three full recipes of cookies. That's dangerous to That's, be lying around. It's too dangerous. <laughs> we have a vacation in a month and a half and we can't have that many cookies around. <laughs> It's all incorporated. I'm gonna add the chocolate. Something that Claire also does is use two different textures of chocolate. She does use also two different styles of chocolate. So she uses milk chocolate and dark chocolate, I believe. I just have semi-sweet. I'm using chocolate chunks and chocolate chips. She likes to have little, like little shards of chocolate around in the cookies. So, I'm gonna chop them up a little bit. Then we'll have big pieces of chocolate from the chips and little tiny chocolatey pieces and chocolatey powder almost in the cookies. Sounds really good to me. tip of portioning out your dough before you refrigerate it so that it's not really hard when you're trying to roll out dough balls, which I've never really thought about before, but makes complete sense. So thanks, Claire. <laughs> round of cookie dough. I'm gonna go ahead and brown the butter again, go through all those steps that we just did, and then I'll come back to you when I have a alteration to show you. I am gonna add the flour now, which is my only variation. So I am making this up as I go. I wanted to try using some glutinous rice flour that is used to make mochi or some other Asian foods and desserts. Even though the name is confusing, it is not full of gluten. It is just uh, the name of it. It's also <laughs> called sweet rice flour or uh, mochiko is a really popular brand. I'm gonna use, like I said, I'm making this up. I don't really know the right measurements but, and I don't know if it's gonna work, <laughs> but my thought process is that this flour makes things chewy and I'm hoping that that will bring some good chew to our cookies because gluten is chewy. Gluten is what gives you stretchy, chewy, you know, textures in food and gluten-free flour is not providing that. So we're just testing things out. Little science experiment. It is an experiment. I'm doing one quarter cup of the rice flour. <laughs> and then I'll do three quarters cup Bob's Red Mill one to one. Camille already put the baking soda and salt in the bowl. So I'm just gonna quick combine the dry ingredients and then add them to the wet. Add the chocolate and it's all done. This is attempt number two. All right, third time around, I'm doing the same exact thing as the other two times. 
and I will come back to you when I make the first change. We are back at this solidified butter stage and now it's time to add the sugar. So as I was watching Claire's video, she was commenting that she likes to use brown sugar for the chew and white sugar for the crunch. So I'm trying to get all the chew out of the sugar in this third attempt. So I'm gonna do all brown sugar. It's definitely going to change the flavor slightly with a little bit more molasses-y um, flavors to it, but I'm not mad about that. And then I am going to attempt to bring back that crunch with cornstarch. Once again, I have my baking soda, my salt in here. You got a breath from the stirring? Yes. <laughs> The dry ingredient portion for a half recipe is one cup of flour or whatever. So I think what I wanna do is a, just a small amount of cornstarch. I'm not sure how it will act in the baking process, but I know I haven't seen many recipes that use a large portion of cornstarch in anything. So I think I'm just going to put an eighth cup or two tablespoons. And then the rest flour. So that would be three quarters cups plus two tablespoons. Three quarters cup plus two tablespoons. That makes sense. Really curious how this one's gonna turn out. I'm curious about all of them, but you know, I just came up with these ideas in my sleep, so. <laughs> okay, we portion out all the cookies, labeled them on what the differences were, and Camille covered them nice and tightly and popped them in the fridge. And now it is a waiting game for tomorrow. We are supposed to wait 12 to 48 hours for them to chill, which is why we unfortunately cannot eat them today. Yeah. But I am planning to bake them according to Claire's specifications tomorrow, and when Naomi gets home from work, she'll have how smelling of chocolate chip cookies to come home to. <laughs> how exciting. And we will eat them and give you guys our take on which one was the most successful so you can make it at home. Awesome, I'm excited for tomorrow. We'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. And it is officially the next day. It's Friday. <laughs> Naomi just got home from work and uh, we're about to make dinner, but first we thought we'd have a pre-dinner appetizer. <laughs> a little hors d'oeuvre, if you will. Um, I, while Naomi was at work, I set the oven to 350, cooked the cookies for about 20 minutes. I did 10 minutes, and then like Claire says in her video, I switched racks and rotated them around uh, for another 10 minutes, so 20 minutes total. Perfect. This is cookie number one, cookie number two, and cookie number three. Treated them all exactly the same. We put them all in the refrigerator um, when we finished filming yesterday and you know did everything exactly the same. It just changed the flowers like you saw in, in earlier in the video. So let's try them. Okay, a little bit crispy. This one, to be honest, I did cook a tiny bit longer um, than the other two, just like two or three minutes longer because it was a little uh, thicker and so the middle looked shiny and really raw. Yeah, so. it did look a little raw. I, I told, we, we took the other ones off the same sheet and put it back in the oven. Mm. I don't know why it's thicker, but I mean, might as well try it, right? Yeah. Oh, and uh, these have been cooling for now like 20, 30 minutes, just so you know. Here's a little uh, cross section. <laughs> if you can see, it looks really good. Mm. The flavor mm. is so good. The browning like, of the butter adds so much depth of flavor to these mm. cookies. It really does, like Claire said, that butterscotch or like caramel, mm. but then there's a good level of salt, so it's not too sweet. And then the, the semi-sweet really nice. chocolate. Oh, it's like perfectly kind of crispy. Yeah, the edge is nice and crispy. Mm. Oh my God, these are really good. Mm. I think we're gonna like okay, all wait. of them. I wanna save a bite in case I true. need to retest. Okay, true. Number one for me, number, number one, one for you. <laughs> okay, number two. Ooh. So this one is a little, little thinner, thinner, as you can see. Mmm. 
Ooh. I'm trying to differentiate the texture. The like edge on this second one is it's really thin. Like, lacy. Lacy. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Mmm. God, the flavor is so good. This is the one with the mochi rice flour, or mm -hmm. glutinous rice flour, mm -hmm. if you forgot. And then this mm. is the one where we um, used some cornstarch and all brown sugar, so. This is really fun. This, <laughs> Matan's gonna be so. I told nice. him I saved a couple of uh, cookie dough balls. Mm. Flavor's amazing, again. Oh, this is the one that's all brown sugar. Yes. First bite though, I think I like this one a little more, the second one. This one actually tastes a little less salty for some reason. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's maybe this, like how brown sugar is a little like richer and sweeter. If like it kind of cancels out, I, I don't know, or doesn't let the sauce the salt, salt shine. Uh -huh. mm. Wow, they're all really good though. The edges are so delicious. Though they're all amazing. I That's at least chewy. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say that it does not taste chewy still. When you get right towards the edge, you get a little bit of chew with the crunchy, mm -hmm. but let's get some water. I want to taste them <laughs> one more time because I think I know which one I think is the chewiest, but I want to be sure. Mm -hmm. A little palate cleanser. Yes. Um, okay. Okay, so I think, I mean, we'll taste them again, but I think we can pretty much say confidently that number three was our least favorite mm -hmm. of three incredible cookies that are all significantly better than the cookie tasting video a couple weeks ago. So yeah, <laughs> take that with a grain of salt. All right. You wanna say, on the count of three, number one or two, which one is chewier? Yeah? That we wanna do? Which one you think is the chewiest okay. on the count of three? Ready? After three. After. One, two, three. One, number. two, three, go. Okay, okay ready? <laughs> one, two, three, two. two. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I think that honestly, it's kind of a little bit of preference. I think like they're both incredible. I think this one that we're saying is chewier, the is a little thinner, a little chewier, nice crispy edges. This one, honestly, so many people would be obsessed with it. The people that want like Matan would love this. Doughier. A little bit doughy, um, but not in an undercooked way mm -hmm. at all. It just like is kind of dense and like a little squishy and doughy. Mm -hmm. And it, but it does crumble in your mouth a little more than that one. I'm really curious why though. You know, like I said earlier, I'm not a baker. This was all experimental. And so I'm curious if anyone, or if Claire sees this, why the cookie we did one for one exact recipe, just switching out gluten-free flour is thicker and paler than one that we did one with quarter cup. Only a quarter cup of glutinous rice flour. Same recipe. That was the only chain. I think all that's left now is, is to call in the secret expert taster. The super secret special cookie eater. Is that her I hear? <laughs> is that the cookie specialist? <laughs> Here, actually, let's get out a uh, plate. So we're gonna have uh, this secret guest blind taste test these. We're not gonna tell her what, which one had which modification done to it. Um, we'll just see what she thinks and she can let you know if she agrees with us. Yay! Uh, here she is! Yay! We want you to try all three. Okay, and then just tell us what your favorite is. Okay. okay. cookie preference is like the same as your guys's, so yeah. that's interesting. Yeah. Um, so I definitely like these two better than that one. Mm -hmm. And it's tough between these two because this one's obviously thicker and like more, I don't know, maybe more moist or something like that, but I also think that I like this one a little bit better than that one because it's crispier on the outside and the center of it is just like more like 
gooey and like kind of easier to eat. This one's like thicker. Do so, you find but, chew in any of them? Like do you find like there's a little bit of like chewiness? I think that they're all pretty like the same level of chewiness to me, okay. I think. Okay. But I just enjoyed this one, I think the most, like the whole experience. Oh, Eating right. it, like the chewiness, like the crunchy and also soft center kind of thing. Hey, you yeah. win. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yay! I'm Thank glad you liked you. our favorite I'm too. This one. Yeah. <laughs> and you have plenty more for later. Bye. <laughs> Thank you. Well, yeah, that, that was that a success is, and really interesting. That was a success. I, I am very interested in the science behind this, and I'm glad she blindly chose the same one we did. I and mean, even the same top two. When you took a second bite of. Uh, the, of both of these, yeah. I was like, oh, she has the same thought process yeah, as us. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's exactly what we did, so. Yeah. Really interesting. Cool. Well, we're gonna eat a lot more cookies. And make dinner. And make some <laughs> dinner. <laughs> yeah, let us know if you end up trying any of these recipes, specifically the one with mochi rice flour that ended up being our favorite, but honestly, you can't really go wrong. Um, yeah, with I mean, the base on. recipe was amazing. The brown butter, the brown sugar, the it. salt, like, the little little powdery chocolate ch shards. Uh, shards of chocolate, yeah. exactly. So the recipe is amazing. We messed with it, and for gluten free, that's the one. The second one was the one that we loved the most. Yeah. So let us know if you like the style of video. It was really fun to just kind of experiment, like science experiment with baking, which baking is such a scientific thing. So it's kind of fun to just mess around. Yeah, especially being gluten free. I mean. If you have someone that's gluten free in your life and you want to make them cookies, this recipe is amazing. They would be stoked. They would be very happy. <laughs> and no one would know it's gluten free. So that's always exciting. Well, thanks for joining us and we'll, we'll see, see you next time. week. Bye. Bye.